How you doing? Yeah. Yeah. How you doing? My name is Todd. Hi. Hi, Todd. Nice meeting you. Hey, nice meeting you too, Joel. Um, well, here, here's the literature that we're passing out. Um, but basically, in Texas, there's 13,000 kids in the foster care system waiting to be adopted. Sure. And nobody yeah. wants them, right? Because they're not babies. So um, the state will pay for the adoption. The state will pay for all medical and um, college, and dental, and vision. Right? If you adopt these kids. Yeah. Um, there's 30,000 churches in Texas, over 70,000 pastors. Like this church alone almost could adopt every single one of these kids in foster care, you know, um, waiting to be adopted. These kids are actually just, they'll age out. That's what happens to them, they'll age out, right? right? And then um, the number one cause of death in Texas is child sacrifice. Like this is, a, this is legal in Texas, you know? And, and nobody cares. Like nobody's trying to make it illegal. You know, everybody says they're pro-life and they're against it, but I'm like, okay, how are you against it, right? Sure. Do you just have a mental thing in your head that says, well, yeah, that's, like if someone was getting raped right here, we'd be like. Oh, of course. I'm sure everybody here would, would come out and, and try to protect the woman if it, there was a rape right. trying to take place. Right, but 60,000 abortions every year and this is what they do. That woman's getting raped and we're like, you and me are like, yeah, we're against that but we let it happen. We don't do anything to stop it. We don't stand in between the perpetrator, you know? Like in, in the Texas- my, I guess, I guess what my question is, how is, I guess, standing here in front of the church, I mean, I've got a two-year-old son. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm not gonna, I had my child out of wedlock. Uh -huh. uh, I, I'm engaged to the mother now, Yeah. but there was a long time that we were, you know, we weren't certain about what's going on. Right. I mean, that topic came up for a brief period of time and right. I'm not gonna lie like a part of me was terrified right but I I know what my faith says I know what my heart says and my sin does not give me the right to end a life right period. right and so that's just from a faith perspective yeah but from a biological perspective the second that an egg and sperm come into contact right that is a fully functioning cell that is its own life it has its own DNA yeah, yeah I mean it, I agree so <laughs> it's it's not a matter of if it's alive or not I mean it's alive it's just right you know yeah I agree my yeah. biological point of view right I'm, I'm extremely pro-life you know and my question I guess is I'm not going to protest in front of my church or anything that has to do with I, I'm rather I would rather get people that live in the neighborhoods to come to church to understand the sanctity of life rather than like I mean that's really like that's that, horrible right that, it hurts yeah it hurts my heart to look at and I I guess the, the question I've got is how is doing this helping reach other people to stand with you right because it it sounds kind of counterproductive for what you're trying to accomplish and yes it is it is a very worth like worthy cause to do uh, but my question is wouldn't it be more productive to go talk to the people that are trying to continue this like the doctors of you know and I, I'm sure they've they've been bombarded so much they don't even care but at the same time talk to the you know the uh, legislators in Texas talk to the, you know, the people who can actually enforce certain changes instead of uh, making it difficult for me to bring my, my kid. I mean, like I said, I, I had him out of bed. So it's harder. Like I, like, I almost want to cover his eyes before we get to church. Right. And that's hard. Right. So well, here, here, the, here's my answer. Um, repentance change comes at the house of the Lord okay so if we live in a land where child sacrifice is legal and is the number one cause of death and the church is apathetic towards it like actually doesn't care they really don't care like we actually did go to the Congress or th uh, to the Republican um, convention we we there's like 20 of us only like 10 at a time and we walked in we handed out pamphlets and we said hey look we need to make abortion illegal and they're like oh I'm pro life and we're like, oh, what does that mean? Does that mean you make bills like, well, if the baby has a heart, you can't kill it? Because that's wicked and evil. Yeah. The Bible says not to make iniquitous decrees, well, right? I mean, you could argue that 
Well, Hell, there's adults that have pacemakers. They can't they can't live right, without an right. external force on their heart. Right. So, so that's that a bad law, right? So so we went there and we called them to repent of being pro-life because being pro-life really all the the whole pro-life movement in the last 45 years the only thing they've ever done like they've never tried to make it illegal they just try to regulate it and we don't regulate slavery we don't regulate you know we don't regulate murder uh, we don't do those things right so okay so, so well, let me finish you mentioned you mentioned slavery and i wanted to right. ask you about that because well, let's ask let's an, can I answer that after i finish your first sure, question yeah, 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 absolutely. so so the reason we go to, to in front of churches because the Bible says to expose the um, evil, right? To defend the innocent, be a voice for the voiceless. We can't convince wicked people to make abortion illegal if we can't convince people that profess the name of Christ. You know, in other words, we actually did have a bill. We went to, like I was telling you, we went to the state and we actually got um, Tony Tenderholt to put forth a bill to make abortion illegal, criminal, just like if you killed a one-year-old, yeah, same as having abortion, right? Same thing. All right. None, almost, like 99.9% .9 of the churches never talked about it, never spoke about it, never brought it up. And here's the reason why, because it's too controversial and because they're a 501c3, they're not allowed to talk about it. So by, by their own, because, you know, this isn't actually the church, right? You and I are the church. No, absolutely. This is a, a, fe a federal-run corporation, right? They have a 501c3, sure. just they're, like... They're a non-profit organization. Just like a bank. The same as a, they're the same as a bank. They're a corporation, right? So there, there's things that they're not allowed to tell you, hey, this bill's coming up. You can't, you know, vote to make abortion illegal because they're afraid they'll lose their tax-free um, rights, right? Yeah. So they don't talk about it. All the churches in Texas didn't talk about it. There was only a thousand people that showed up to the rally in Austin, right? I mean, we have 70,000 pastors in Texas. Really, there's, they're just apathetic, right? In other words, this is a country club. This is really what this is, where people get together and they enjoy a, a, some time together. And then they go out and eat and they watch football, you know? But they don't advance the kingdom of God. Like, if we get all these people to go to church on Sunday, abortion won't be any closer to being illegal. Because everybody has a pro-life view, but they don't do those things right, doesn't it start, to make it illegal. Doesn't it start with the individual, not the, not the group? I mean, my point is is how are we supposed to reach the hearts of people that would that would potentially run for government run for you know to vote to make it illegal right and right. and this is what i was trying to say about how you'd mentioned slavery slavery is still present today in different countries right but and it's illegal here yeah it, like you can't buy here. a black woman and rape her and cut her head off if you don't like her but you, I mean, we could do that. That was legal. Right. And <laughs> I guess my thing is it, it doesn't matter the color. I mean, because you could argue that an intercervant servant had a pretty bad go at it, too. Yeah. Uh, but so slavery was it was a property issue. And I would argue that, you know, a lot of the pro pro choice, quote unquote, pro choice uh, is the same thing because it's it's, quote unquote, her body. But right. it's, it's really not. Problem. Right. Uh, it's a, it's, they say it, it all the same thing. The child's inside of her body yeah. or outside. Of they the say body. all the same thing. The they say if you don't want to have a slave, don't have a slave. If you don't want to have an abortion, don't have an abortion. Right. But you know, my body, my choice. With, it's got to start with getting the the majority of people to. We already have the majority of people. Look at how many people yeah, go to absolutely. church, man. You know, look, everybody's pro life. Everybody's Christian. It's the number right. one cause of death. This church right here does not change people's hearts and minds towards Christ that actually do kingdom building things, all right? They don't. They do a lot of outreach. I, you look, would, you look, would not I do. I know this church. I know this church. Like, I know people that go here. I've gone here a couple of times. I've watched their sermons. This is a prosperity church. This is like a Joel Olstein church, okay? This is what it is. Joel Olstein endorses this church. Like, there's an ad on YouTube saying, you know, hey, Joel Olstein's like, this is a good church. And any church that Joel Olstein endorses it, it is a prosperity church it is not a biblical based church this church right here if you want to network and do your um, your business grow your business this is a good church to go with you know like there's probably more pyramid scams in this church I know all the people I, I know I, mean, I, I have all these neighbors I honestly, right I don't know I come here to yeah. to listen to got the, the, the sermon I, I yeah. come here to further my knowledge of God and do that by reading the Bible. This yeah, guy is not preaching biblical Christianity. He's not, man. If you listen to the sermons, like if you watch like what, Paul Washer. Okay, so let me ask you something real quick. You uh -huh. said that he, he's not preaching 
biblical Christianity. Yeah. So, and you mentioned that it's a prosperity church, right? right? Well, I, with anything, it takes money to, to, to create change, right? No, it I, doesn't. It, it just takes people walking the streets and talking to people. Yeah, that's what it takes. I agree with that. You don't have to build a hundred. They spend a hundred thousand dollars on a treehouse in here for the kids. Yeah. All right. It's <laughs> God. I don't feel that God wants us to sell of our sell all of our possessions. I and, didn't say that. Yeah. And you know, create communes and, and things like that. I, I'm not, and I'm not saying that that's what you're saying. All I'm saying is, God wants us to have have a good life. God wants us to be. No, prosperous. that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says He wants you to die to self. He says that if you follow Me, the world will hate you. Nobody hates this church, all right? He says they'll hate you. They hated me first, all right? He said to love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah, if absolutely. they're killing people in your neighborhood and nobody cares, all right? If the number one cause of all these people, of all the dead, uh, everybody who's going to die here in Texas is child sacrifice. That's what it is. It's child sacrifice. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's murder of children, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm in high school. I want to like finish my high school, so I'm going to sacrifice my child. Okay, you know, so I only yeah, want three kids. I don't want four kids, so I'm going to sacrifice my child. You know, oh, I already have three girls. I don't want any more girls. You know, more girls are aborted than boys, yeah, no, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to sacrifice my child. You know, it's child sacrifice and it's legal in this land and thousands and thousands, I mean, get it, 70,000 pastors just pastors in Texas, all right? Millions of Christians. We could make it illegal in a day. We could persuade the governor to sign one piece of paperwork. It's more complicated than No, that. it's not. Yeah. No, it's not. To, Colorado to made illegal. Colorado made pot legal, even though the federal sure, government but said no. They had to do a lot of steps throughout the government. No, they to didn't. Even get that on they the, they on just the had they just had to get a ballot and a vote. Sure. But we could do that time. It's not a day. <laughs> The yeah. governor right now, because in the in the state constitution, it says that abortion is illegal and it's murder. Our Texas state constitution says so that. So then it, it would make more sense. So we bowed down to the federal beast and said, okay, the federal beast says we can sacrifice children, so we're going to allow it. That's what happened. So the governor could just say, no, it's murder and nobody can kill babies. And if, if the Christian, if just the pastors cried out, if just the pastors acted like Christians, you know, I mean, what's true religion? Taking care of widows and orphans in their time of need. Yes. What greater need is a child who's in his mother's womb, who the mother thinks the best option is to kill her baby? What kind of society do we live in where women feel like the best thing that they can do under the circumstance is kill their baby? What a Although, wicked society we live in. I don't know that I've ever heard of any person who's gone through an abortion, ex you know, pro proclaim the uh, wonders and glory of abortion like almost it's like 75 percent Planned Parenthood's own statistics of people who have abortions claim to be Christians I mean I would I would question how much they really follow their faith but how about all right so let's not even let's not how about these people how about you how about me do we follow our faith do we defend the innocent do we hold back you. those that are being led to the slaughter it, <laughs> No, we don't. Okay, but my thing is, if I know of something, it's kind of like how you said, if there was a woman right here being raped, you know, would we just stand by and watch? No. Okay, well, I'm telling you, but, the number one cause of death in Texas sure, is child yeah. sacrifice. So you know, and you're a man who's supposed to stand at the gates yeah, and absolutely. defend the innocent. Absolutely. All right? And I and I take that very seriously. Well, then you have a responsibility to help make it illegal in Texas. I And honestly, if... If it were to come to a vote or come to... We have to get it to come to a vote. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> we have to expose it. And that's why I say like people like you. I go, look, this is what you're unhappy with. This is what's legal. I know it sucks. And I know it hurts. But this child right here wants to have a voice too. I, I, it, and it wants us to scream louder than we're actually screaming and protest more. And I'm not actually protesting this church. I'm exposing this to people that I hope repent of their apathy. Right. And I, I guess... My my other question was, is it, you know, is it, you know, are you holding these signs up in, in front of a church to, to get people to come out here and to talk to you like this? No, I'm getting them to expose them to this evil. So even though they say, I don't like that guy, but that's, I can't believe that that's what's going on. Well, I mean, you know? I wasn't sinning. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about coming up here to talk to you because I didn't like you. Right. I was, I'm trying to understand. Right. And, 
So that's good. That's a good thing. Yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I'm, just, I'm trying to understand. You know, because you do care and you do have a heart and you did think about killing your own child, and you and you guys decided not to do it. Well, it, it wasn't even really a, a much of a decision. It, it was like I sinned doesn't give me the right to kill. Right. I and, mean, there is, and that's completely true, right? Like yeah, the, it, the child shouldn't pay for the sins of the father. The child didn't do anything wrong. Right. <laughs> you know. Um, and I mean. And God could take something that's sinful and broken and make it into something and beautiful. I'm not, I'm not gonna say that I've I've always been the best Christian. I'm not gonna I'm not on a soapbox by any means. Like, right. And me yes, too. I did the me right too. Thing once. Like, yeah. I mean, it still doesn't make me like an awesome man of God. I hate no, it doesn't. No. In fact, when you say I didn't kill my own child, that doesn't say much right. about. That's not me. Like, <laughs> but you shouldn't kill your own child. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but it's just it's my point that. You know, if I if I wasn't a Christian, if I didn't place that high of a value on life, like it, I don't know if I would have thought the same. Right, right. So, so when people come out and talk to me who aren't Christians, I, I explain well, I mean, why every child is created in the image of God. Yeah, and, and we, why that's why that's such is, an important thing. Like you get into these these uh, sonograms where they're like it's called the uh, 4D, where it's like yeah. the it's like a 3D of the baby moving around in real time. Yeah. I mean, like, you start seeing that it's a baby within, like, a couple of weeks. Like, yeah, yeah they got a couple of rolls and stuff in weird places, but it's a baby, you know? Yeah, it's not a cow. Right. <laughs> right. Like, what is it? What are you having? A cow? A horse? You don't have a cow, man. <laughs> it's a baby. Uh, but I guess, uh, I just, I'm struggling with it because, yeah, you, I mean, you absolutely have... Have to write. Well, well, here's the most harsh thing I can say to you, okay? And and I, and I mean this in love, all yeah, right? Absolutely. So, but I like it when kids see this, and the reason is I hope that they don't grow up to be as apathetic and as wicked and evil as their parents. That they say we should stop this. That that is wrong. And you know what? Little kids, when they Wait, see this, they that... go to their parents and go, "That you could? That's legal." You know, like a seven-year-old kid will be like, why is that legal? I mean, but it's just... But we're okay with it. We live our lives with it, ignoring it, being totally apathetic to it. I see that on a daily basis. Well, we should. Like, I wish I could, like, know where all these people were going for lunch afterwards. And, you know, when it's nice outside and they sit outside in the restaurant and I could stand there and show them and go, look, this is what we don't care about. This is what's going to happen every single day. This is what this kid was crying out you know and you know what they say you're ruining my lunch man and it's like yeah, yeah. I mean, I <laughs> so I, I try to do this every Sunday we go to schools during the week uh, Monday through Friday to high schools and then we do town squares you know because it is bad man and you know what these kids see all these kids over here we adopted six from uh, the foster care system and people don't realize, man. That, look at the, look at these homes, okay? Yeah. They have like one or two, maybe three kids. You know, there's these kids that are God loves them just as much as He loves their their born kids, and we ignore them. These kids turn 18 and they get kicked out of the foster care system. Like Chloe, she was 11 years old. She's been like at eight different foster care homes. You know, um, my two, my two boys that we adopted, they were um, in a um, a gay couple who would watch them take showers. And they go to this church, all right? And, and CPS, they were foster parents, right? Took them away and, and gave them to us. But they went to this church. I guess, I guess that's the point to where the rubber meets the road. And in terms of like, in situations like that, yeah, we need to know like who these people are so we can say, you know. But we know who we are. We're not doing anything. <laughs> like we're not they're not this church alone is it's not known for the church that adopts all the foster kids in town <laughs> and the, you know who's known for it the border towns along the border of mexico because you can get a, like a you know a three thousand square foot house for like um you know 900 bucks a month and you could have six foster kids right because when they're foster kids you get 700 dollars a month for a kid right so they house these kids so they get like you know they get about five thousand dollars for those kids so it's a profit center and the state gets money from the feds it's a business man it's child trafficking we need to rescue these kids out but you know what we got a hundred thousand dollar brand new treehouse in here 
So you know, I and they have monster truck things here, and they have like great like. Right. The, the, this is an the, entertainment the center. All of these things that the church is doing, though, is is to get is to reach out to people that may not have any normal religious inclination and right. attract it's to, it's them to, to it. It's to build this country club. It is not to advance the kingdom of God in our in our state, or else they would be doing these things. <laughs> like what? I mean, the lowest hanging fruit is children in our society that don't have loving homes. We don't adopt kids because we want we want uh, bigger families. We adopt kids because they need a home. Yeah, and I agree with you. Like, and but we don't do that. And I can testify to that because I sit. You know who does it? Gays and lesbians. You yeah. say all of a sudden if you said, "Hey, honey, all right, we're getting married," and I really do believe, like. I'm guilty of being apathetic. And I think one of the things that we can do is we can actually adopt a little girl or a little, a little boy. Like we, we should, we should do that. The state pays for it. It doesn't cost us anything. It pays. For, we could do that. Let's do that. And then you had to sit through all these foster classes, right? To do foster to adopt. And you know who you're going to sit with? Gays and lesbians all over the place. That's who goes. That's who's doing it right now. Not and pastors. That, that's why I originally, or I still don't, believe that gay marriage is should be legal no it's unbiblical it's an abomination you know well, i mean okay so the, the whole way they framed it was you know don't don't men and women don't men and women deserve to love whoever they want and i would reframe that question as well don't to, don't every child deserve to have a mother and a father like right. that's i mean that's what the that's the whole purpose of marriage is right says, you know well liberalism is encroaching upon um, Christianity in America, all right? Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm not a Republican, all right? I'm a Christian. Sure. So we are supposed to have dominion over the land. We're supposed to conquer. We're supposed to protect, right? We're supposed to raise up. Those are the things that Christians are supposed to do, but that's not what we do, man. You know, literally, we're a country club. You know, we don't, you know, we don't, you know in the olden days, there's country clubs, right? Sure. All right, that's what this is now. This yeah, is what it's become. I mean, I would say that it's it's not so much that they're trying to be a country club to be a country club. They're they're trying to I, I would make accessible Christ. I would agree to, with you if they did market. kingdom work. All right, they do cool stuff. Yeah. They do cool stuff, I know. Like when there's a, a tornado, they'll go and it's great stuff, right? Yeah. All right. But what and about I mean, these that's, that's, what about these kids? When I give my, my money to offering, that's I'm not like yeah, I give some money for for the, the children's project. I have a child that goes here. I want I want my kid to have a good, you know, a fun experience with God. I want him to associate God with If you want him to have a fun experience with God, take him to Dallas buy a bunch of um, Subway sandwiches, cut them in half, and feed homeless people. But All right. I mean, he's two. He's going to have more fun on a playground slide than he is going to be walking around in Dallas. Have you ever I mean, heard about the Book of Martyrs? The Book of Martyrs? Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't tell you. Okay, well, basically, it's throughout... The t from the time of Christ on, all the people who died um, serving God. All right? Um, there's, there's not a book of best playgrounds in churches absolutely you know, all right I this they're teaching the wrong thing you go to the churches these churches and they got when we dropped our kids off because our neighbor wanted to bring them to vbs um they were playing secular filthy music i mean it wasn't even christian it wasn't even like christian music by gay people that you know is pro prolific in our in our christianity right yeah. it wasn't even that it was secular you know you know, top 40, you know. Yeah. No, I mean, it, I don't, <laughs> I don't know, like, exactly everything that's going on in the, the children's center. And I, I suppose that's my fault as a parent. I should, you know, definitely talk to them and find out what the curriculum is and everything like that. But my thing is that you've got to start somewhere with yeah. every child. You have to start in your home. Yeah, teaching absolutely. Teaching him the no. Word of God and knowing no, the Word of God. That way you know what a counterfeit is. Look, yeah. ask your conscience, all right? Ask your, your spirit in you. If what I'm telling you, if I'm, a, if I'm lying to you. No, and I, I don't believe that you are lying. Um, it, it's not about lying. It's about tactics. 
and I guess that's you know like so you think these tactics that all these big mega churches are doing around Texas and not even the mega churches but the I mean there's 30,000 churches in Texas how could they not take care of 13,000 kids I mean there's 23,000 kids in foster care and, and you know what maybe maybe you I mean they have small groups they do and I mean I would ask why not go to the church that they all this church they, they, they all know all the churches no, know no no, no. <laughs> no no let me let me finish the thought okay I'm sorry you can you can start a small group if you want um just you know start one that raises awareness about adoption like that would to me would be more effective and you can start this throughout multiple mega churches that's that would be more of an effective way to do things than to i mean protest showing you know chopped up unborn children i mean that's just my like that would be more what made sense to me you know like that way you can you can announce what you're trying to do inside of the church instead of you know making it awkward for well, people with kids may, trying to come in maybe yeah and I, and I wish I could make it like extremely more awkward you know sure. I mean I really do but you know maybe you should do some of these things in the church that you go to like maybe maybe you're one of those people that are like hey you know what I, I don't really like that guy like he seems nice and stuff I don't like his tactics All right and but if what he's saying is true I'm gonna research it we should do something about it so but I guess <laughs> then the next question would be what where does it end so if somebody were successful and in, in raising awareness about the need for adoptions what, I mean would you stop well we're Where not we're, we're not we, we right. usually do um, I mean, we've been doing this for years now, right? We go to different, every Sunday we're at a, at a church. So we'll stay two or three Sundays, maybe four Sundays, uh, maybe sometimes, you know, a couple months at one church. And then we go to another church, right? I mean, I mean, it, you know I mean? I'm not gonna lie. Like I said, I'm, I'm a member of this church. I don't represent the church. I don't come here every Sunday. So right. it's like every time I've come here, y'all been here. <laughs> yeah, we've, uh, we've only been here been four like, times. Okay, I mean, and that maybe that was here, maybe, I don't know if you're a part of a, another bigger group that does um, like the protests and uh, I guess. And again, we don't call it a protest. It's called an ex in Christendom. It's an exhortation, right? Uh, the Bible says to exhort, to spur. And you know what spur is? Well, the biblical spur. It's like it's a thing. On, it, literally, it's that thing on your yeah, and, 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 it, and it's like, it's like a, a kick in the yeah. ribs, right? Uh, and this is kind of like a kick in the ribs, right? You look at it and go, oh, what the heck, you know? Um, so this is a spurring. It, it is an exhortation. We're not protesting and saying, you know. Well, it's saying church repent. I mean, that's right. That's pretty graphic. That's, I mean, that's but that's a t like but you, that is a welcome, loving thing. That's what the church should say all. It does say all the time. That's what Jesus said. That's right, what all right. the revelations about. When, when when you're driving along and you see these photos and you see church repent along, everywhere. it makes the church look bad, right? Well, it, like it's guilty of something. Yeah, and it is. And it, but it's it is, but it's its main goal. No matter how much of a country club or whatever it is, is still to reach other people. Look, man, if there was in Texas a million more just like this, we'd be in the same boat. No different. There's no different. Okay, but this helps people enjoy their Sunday, feel good about themselves. You go here. You you leave feeling you good learn, about yourself. You learn about Christ. Yeah. All right. Well, if they were learning about Christ, right, biblical Christ, they would pick up their cross and start doing the work, and we would start Christendom look, look completely different than it does now. This is a false so Christianity. What, what would what would Christendom look like if? Well, f first of all, all the iniquitous decrees, all the bad laws, would be gone. We would we would get them all out there wouldn't be no abortion in in texas there um all the orphans would be adopted you would see fruit of true christianity like that's what that's how that's how you know whether you're going to heaven or not okay it's not based on what you believe it's not all right even satan believes it's based on your fruit what is your fruit now if you think your fruit is well i'm not as bad as i used to be like i'm better than i used to be that's not fruit all right it's really not Fruit is a tangible thing that you can show people. Like, uh, you know, you can't really tell it's a lemon tree until it has lemons on it. And then you can go, oh, yeah, it's a lemon tree, you know. Um, but, you know, that thing will be cursed if it doesn't bear fruit. 
So you having a right idea and going to church and tithing doesn't even make you a Christian, right? Even if you ask Jesus Christ into your heart. Like, that's that's the, literally the definition of being a Christian. No, it's not. No, it's not. Okay, all right, so let me prove this out to you. Okay. What, um, what's the most important thing in Christendom? What are we supposed to do? Uh, acknowledge that Jesus is the Messiah. Uh, you know, proclaim that he died on the cross for three days. He was risen. And by doing that act, we were forgiven for our sins. Right, so... So let me, so here, I'll prove you wrong, okay? That's not what the Bible says. The, what the Bible says, that the, what you're supposed to do, the most important thing, is love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Right. And the second most important thing is to love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, all right? So, so you don't thing. have to ask right. Jesus Christ into your heart. You just have to love God and do what he says. All right? So that's, that's Christendom. Asking God into your heart is something that happened, if, you know, like 80 years ago that was like a total fallacy. It's not even in, it's not even in the Bible. Like saying the sinner's I prayer. The truth and the life, that's, that's in the Bible. Yeah, but it's not. Look, everybody who wants to uh, um, give their life to Jesus Christ, say this prayer after me. All right? That not, has nothing to do with Christianity. 16, uh, God gave his only begotten son that he still, right. whosoever shall believe in him shall have everlasting life and shall not perish. Right. But believe doesn't mean, like Satan believes. A lot of people no, who and sin and, and don't follow Christ believe. And I know that. You know, okay. It, that so is dead. we have to actually do what the Bible says. That's what I'm saying this church does not do and Christendom in Texas doesn't do or else we would not have abortion legal and we would not. Uh, you know, Roe v. Wade was started here in Texas. Okay. That's all Texas. Texas did this, right? Texas was a slave state. All right. Texas was okay with abortion. All right. And I don't know that anybody's like the the thing is is that people were more okay with it whenever they didn't understand what was really happening. And now that you know they they made up some false statistic about you know X number of women were dying because they were doing wire quote unquote wire hanger abortions and. The, but the actual number was that's like that's not true. Everybody knows now, yeah, and sure. they're still okay with it. No, I don't think. That, I well, think then why don't we make it, it illegal? Why don't we make it illegal? Not... You know who the police protect? The abortion workers. Well, yeah, because they even though <laughs> because they do what the they governor are, says. Even though that they are doing something wrong, they do what the people want. Police do what the people want. I think it's. it's we I need to rise that, up. Uh, it's they. They have to preserve order more than anything because... No, no, no. They have to honor God more than anything. And God's laws, as all these officer, Christian cops, all these Christian cops never should um, break God's law for man's law. Never. That's where the line is. You never break God's law. All right? right They're defending they murderers. A murderer is going on right there. And people who speak too loud, they give tickets to. They arrest all right if you cross this line even like this they throw you in jail okay they're defending the murderers these christian cops you know why because that's a law of land that's what they so the, the people want that goes back to what i was saying about they have to they have to protect civil order because regardless of their faith if they no, see that's wrong never regardless of your faith no, regardless never of regardless faith, of god there's, there's no there's they're killing babies that are, that are they're, not Christian. They're killing some. All right, so, so what you're saying is, so is if slavery to, was legal, these cops need to defend the slave master's that's ability why to we murder. A civil war over it. Right. If we have to fight a civil war over the men won't the even get out of, of bed. They won't even get out of bed to do anything to make it illegal. Right. So they get offended when they see a, a reminder of the sin that's in our land. So, they're like, that disgusts me. So get rid this, of your this picture. Me back to like. We can take this, we can ramp this up into a, a quote unquote civil war by, by prodding people with their faith and by doing that. But it would make more sense to me that we go into the church, that we we work with the system that we've given. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> do but it. And we don't need a civil war. We just need a vote. Sure. We just need and, and demand, stop giving money to the pro-life movement because all they want to do is regulate it. That's all they've ever done. They've never put forward abolitionism. Actually put forth a bill, and we're going to put forth a bill again, and it'll get shot down again. We, last time we had 11 representatives that signed. 
okay? The, you know who killed it? The pro-lifers. The right for life, Texas right for life, they killed it. You know, they get millions and millions and okay. millions of dollars. You know that you know the idea of, you know, putting a frog in hot water as opposed mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. warming up the frog in the yeah. water? So it's the same kind of principle whenever you're making change like this in a, in a legal sense. Mm -hmm. um, because you have to... Anytime that you try to make a, a quick and sudden change, people will have a knee-jerk reaction. And so, while I don't agree with what what's going on, I understand that it's that it's happening to soften the blow because people are going to feel like, well, you're taking away women's rights. But that's not that's even though that's not the case. You're just saying, well, if you if you decide to put that in there, you can't kill that person, you know. And that's I mean that's essentially what's happening and you have to make a lot of these feminist groups and, and people realize like we're not trying to take away women's rights you have the right to sleep around or you have the right to be absent and it's just a matter of sorry. Uh, and it's just a matter of you know making it so that it's it's more acceptable to a lot of the the left wing group, and whether it's acceptable or not, it doesn't it doesn't speak on its morality. Uh, but it like, again, it's just I guess we my, just need the pastors to speak up. Right, but that's what I'm saying is like my <laughs> my conflict is is where you're protesting in front of a church, and uh, and I know you said it wasn't. Is a, a spurring of the church, um, an exhortation, yeah, exhortation, exposing yeah. the evil, yeah. Like you don't see one sign here that says "Don't go in here." <laughs> Rev, you, you're saying the church of pain, so right. In other words, there's something flawed with this this church, and I would. What's the church, by the way? The church is is the the people that make up the body. Right, it's us, it's right? Us. Yeah, I say that I'm saying repent. To you and everybody else in our nation, in our in our state, you know that we need to repent. All right, that I, I'm not talking to the wicked. I'm not talking to the the, the atheists yeah, or agnostics. I'm talking to the Christians. I'm saying, look, we need to make this illegal. Look, this is legal in our land, and we we do nothing to stop it. Right, like it, if they were killing two years old, it. it's it, not about making that. Like, it's not about that being a, an issue for, you know, I, I know you said it's it's for making people in the, in the church wake up. But, it, I mean, you're going to have people that are, are new to their faith and, and so, they're relatively weak right. in their faith. Right. And they're going to see these things. and they're Every, see Almost everybody here is weak in their faith or they wouldn't be going to this particular church. All right. They don't have a biblical, even even a biblical structure. Like, they even call his wife a pastor. All right. Now, if if you actually like believe in biblical Christianity, like in a in a, a foundational sense that they teach, like in seminary, you can't have a female pastor. Now, she could be a like a ministry leader for the women's group, but this church, you can go on their website and look, and it says, and his wife's name right there, and so it's not as. I'm not lying to you, man. This is a country club. What they do, and this is what Jesus says that that will happen, is that there'll be men that tickle your ears and make you feel good about yourself, and you know they'll they'll deceive all these people. And that's really what this is. I mean, if you watch a pastor like Paul Washer, it's hugely different, man. And you don't go out of there feeling good about yourself. You're like, ah, oh, you know what? I do, I, I do need to stop looking at porn. I do need to like treat my wife better. I do need to like lead my kids better. Like, ah, oh, you things know. Those are kind of assumed. Like, I, I don't think that porn is a good thing. I think it's detrimental to families and marriages. And yeah, but when you go to church here and you listen to his sermons, you know what you do is you, you feel better about not, yourself moving forward right like they believe that basically that god loves everybody where where you're, where you're at god. and 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 the bible doesn't say that that's a song god. that's a christian song what the what jesus says is all right is that you need to repent 
All right, pick up your cross and follow me. It's not about like, okay, just let's, let's go. You know, like we're good. You know, like I love you. You'll actually crush you. Do you know what hell is? Like most Christians don't even, especially Christians who go to churches like this, they don't even know what hell is. Is the absence of God. No, it's not. Yeah. No, no, it, that is, that is a charism. That, that is, a, that's what this church preaches. Hell is actually the full wrath of God all the time. You're in the presence of God. It's his full wrath. It is not like a, just a dark hole where there, no. there's no access of God. It is God's it's, full wrath upon you. Sure. All right. But it, Big difference in absence right, of God. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is, <laughs> like you said that we're there, we're in the you know we're in the grace of God right now. Right. And that's what I'm saying is like it, I, I I should have spe specified more clearly, but how you doing, sir? Uh, I guess my I mean that's that's what hell is. Yeah. Yeah. But that that you won't hear that here, you you won't, man. Yeah, I listen to their sermons, and you know what? Oftentimes he doesn't even bring up the Bible. Well, I mean, like he, he quotes his own Sunday. book. Well, he no no no. He, <laughs> he quotes the Bible every Sunday. We they give us uh, a, a note sheet that has you know the purpose of his sermon that goes and. It uses the verses to back it up. Yeah, I mean, I, I've watched I've watched quite a few of his sermons, so yeah, I, I understand. And I guess I mean I'm missing all my old service, but man. don't worry, man. You're better off. I, I promise you, you're better off. Because you know what? Uh, you should be in the Word, learning and hearing. Because when he says stupid stuff that opposes the Word of God and the Spirit of God, you could be like, "Whoa, wait a minute, that wasn't right." Like. That's not what God actually, like God does not want you to drive a BMW, have a beautiful house, have your business be totally successful. Like that's not God's desire. God's desire is that if you love and want the things that God wants, which is for you to pick up your cross, to love your neighbor as yourself, that God will give you your heart's desires. If your heart's desires line up with the heart, the desires of God, then that's, that's what God will do for you. You know? That, that's what he's talking about. He's not talking about living high on the hog and being like King David and being a millionaire. And money's not bad, but if that's where your heart is... It's just, I, I believe that, you know... To me, it's more, you know, God uses different people in different ways. And yes, there are people that are, are made to go out and beat the, Christ for path, beat the path for Christ. Um, and then there's, there's also got to be people who are the sentries in their own, in their own cities and, and things like that that have to continue their faith here. And we are the, you know, we are the sentries that, you know, well, shouldn't a sentry protect orphans and absolutely? Shouldn't they like I, make abortion not, illegal? I have I've not disagreed with that statement at all. Well, just, let's do it. But <laughs> you don't have to do it like me. Have I once asked you to come stand with me? No. But, but you should. You should. But it's like if if there was a reason that I felt there would there would be to come stand with you, I would ask why were you standing? Why would you stand here? And I and I know what you're saying that. Do you know that they will arrest me if I if I walk on the property over here? That this church will arrest me. The cops even told me that today, this morning. Right, but I would I wouldn't wonder if I mean the reason being is because you're it feels like you're I guess being forceful and like you're being really abrasive in in terms of You've been being talking invited. to me. Sure. <laughs> like they could come out and talk to me. But you know, they, they don't have to tell me when after they talk to me, okay, yeah, all right, if you step on our property, I'm gonna, we're going to arrest you. You know, it's like, okay. Well, you know? I, mean, I mean, the Bible actually says not to do that with brothers. Like, you don't call the magistrates on brothers, okay? You deal with it yeah, amongst yourselves, all right? So it, it's real clear about that. And Because I'm not actually, like, I'm not, like, chasing people down and going, here, take this, take this. or sure. You know, I'm not, like... I'm not being crazy, man. I'm just saying, like, look, this is what we need to make illegal. This is, like, what's going on in our communities, and we don't care, you know? Like, we should do something about this. And and they call the cops on us. Like, 
again, it's just, I feel like you're, you're promoting a good message. I feel like you're doing it with a really, like, I feel like, I don't know that Jesus would be doing what you're doing. Look what Jesus did. I, he I, hung I on a cross he, knowingly, bloody, grossed sure, out, just absolutely. horrible, along the walkway where everybody has to walk into town, right? Yeah. Everybody saw it. It's not like, I don't I don't think he, he planned the route down the hill, though. You know, up the hill, I should say. Uh, <laughs> I, I feel like... He didn't know that was going to happen? No, 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 no. I, 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 I fully admit, God knew his son was going to deal with that, and Jesus knew he, he was, you know... When he was going into Jerusalem, and they were after, they were going after Christians. Right. Early, they were going after the early church really hard. I, I feel like he was well aware of what was going to happen. You could have and picked a million different ways to be I murdered, like that right? Was, that was literally the the reason why our faith is as strong as it is, is because of the way that he went, and he he knew, even though he knew what was going to happen, he still went forward through it anyway. He went through it right. anyway. Because Agonyingly so, right? Like, it was, like, it was horrible. Like, literally, Jesus Christ died, so no one else has to. For our, for our sins. For death. our sins, yeah. Yeah, and I, I feel like abortion is spitting in Jesus' face. I feel like it is. And ignoring it. I don't, I don't, but I don't, again, I don't see that our church the, all right, the, the so let's not talk about the church because we can't talk about every person, but let's talk about you. Sure. All right, so what do you do to actually make abortion illegal? You I, expose the evil of it? I, I make my personal decisions. Right. And I make sure that my family knows the, the faith part of it, the biology part of it, the science part of it. Uh, Okay, so all right, let's change it. Let's make it a little bit easier to understand. If it was legal to own slaves right now, black people, in Texas, all right, what are you doing to make slavery legal? Now, if you just said, well, I don't own one, I choose. I, my personal decision was not to do it, sure. not to have one. Um, and I taught my kids that, yeah, you see that guy over there whipping that slave? Because they did whip him in, in right, but again, areas. It's not, it's not like that. It, it is like that. It's totally like that. Look, man, it's a not common cause of death. It's just hidden, and people choose to ignore it. It's like that. People get pregnant all the time. A girl told my daughter um, in cheerleading that um, she can't, uh, she won't, she won't be here next week because she's having an abortion. Her cheerleading coach told her that. This is commonplace. This is the so, number one cause so of death in Texas. Would, okay, but again, so whenever it comes to, you know, this person, this individual, is promoting it, whether they realize it or not okay make them aware that they are promoting it either right. unconsciously or consciously right. and then talk talk to them and yeah i'm trying to, to pull scales off of your eyes if there was sure. a black community of slaves in texas but the, and they heard you say well i tell people that i, I would never have slaves and, and when somebody talks to me about slavery i tell them it's wrong do you think they would feel good about that like oh you're doing a good job <laughs> you think those slaves do you think this child feels good about your effort to make it illegal because you don't do it, and because if the opportunity, if, if the subject ever comes up, you'll you'll speak out against it. Absolutely. If, if you, the that child feels comes good about up, it, you speak out against it, and you make it known that it's it's wrong. You can't. If they're you know, killing like you said, Jews, you're, at, you're not out here chasing people down. But whether you want to admit it or not, you're standing at every entrance and every exit, right. showing these images. Right. That's so what the what abolitionists you, did of slavery. All right, that's what the abolitionists the did abolitionists, when Jesus were killing the Jews. At the, I mean, when... Uh, at, at the start of 1960, during the... At, or, yeah, at 1960, there was one... The, the most popular abolitionist newspaper was 3,000 strong in subscribers in a population... In a, in a country of a million, of 100 million. It, well, we have more than that, way more than that, but... Sure. abolishhumanabortion.com that's, like, that's what I'm saying though it's like the abolitionists weren't really driving the driving force that that caused the end of slavery it was the the reality of people that were saying this is not right and I believe that we have in well our if you're talking about the before the civil war yeah. it wasn't because people um, were saying it wasn't right, right? even the northerns benefited 
and yes there were people that were like you know slavery slavery you're not going to change it yeah i understand that that's how that most christian pastors were they didn't speak out against slavery man there's letters about how hey this is too controversial a topic many of our members have slaves they're the ones that actually give the most money because they're the richest so they actually like but, pulled apart but it was abolitionist that actually held up signs of slaves with whip marks all down their backs, right? I have one of those. And it was the abolitionists that brought slave ships, bought little cruises of rich people by um, slave ships and made them smell the stench of death and blood, right? It was gross, it was horrible. Um, they were doing these things and people were saying the same thing as like you, stop, don't show pictures of like hung just, black, black people. But it's but what you're doing is you're adding an element of grotesqueness and i'm not adding it it's grotesque this is what happens if, i'm just making people I see what happens in early december before you guys came here or i guess before i had seen you guys here i was when i when i would go to church it was not an attack on my on my site it wasn't like it's very right. very aggressive and in tactic and i guess my point is that it's like I said, I mean, it, it would be more effective to create change from within our church, in, inside of a church, than to shame anybody, everybody who's coming, coming in. Well, first of all, I've gone to the industrial ministry complex, all right, is what we call it, um, all these churches. I've actually, you know, I grew up in a church, right? I went to church. I mean, I, uh, we got we got kicked out because they said, "Hey, look, stop. Look, abortion is too controversial a topic. We know that one third of the women in our church have had and abortions. I, We're not going to talk about I it. We're not going to have, have a small true. group." I believe that may have been true, but I'm not saying that you go inside of, of the church and start promoting a small group of of the quote unquote abolitionists where you're holding up signs like these. I'm saying go into the church and create a small group that that promotes awareness of adoption and promotes the ideas that well they should be doing that right they should be doing that but if, if they're not <laughs> the army of god's big enough to take care of those thirteen thousand. If, if, if they are not and you are willing to stand up and hold signs of mutilated children to to all those who come in it sounds like you would be the most effective in inciting change yeah, but imagine this. Imagine you have a two-year-old, right? Yeah. And it was legal to mutilate and kill two-year-olds. And nobody cared. It's and, and it was that's legal. Doing, that's what they're doing now. I mean, what, no matter what you call it, abortion is not Yeah, but let's say two-year-olds, like kids your age. And anybody could do it. Like some kid could run up, some man could run up and kill your daughter or your son right now. And it was legal. And nobody cared. But nobody really saw it happening, you know? And you went and said, hey, look, child sacrifice they, they're killing two-year-olds and it's legal and nobody's doing anything about it and, they, and nobody cared and it, it was okay and nobody people said well yeah i'm against that but they didn't say anything would you not start showing people look this is what they do this is what's happening and nobody cares yeah it's ruining your lunch good you know it should ruin your lunch oh you know what Buddy. my five-year-old girl cried good that's a good response she should cry she should cry. Okay, so we should cry too. That makes, that makes her okay. Congratulations, you've proven that a five-year-old child is. is you human. should cry. <laughs> it hurts. I, I I don't know if you've been watching my eyes, but I haven't really been gazing at that a whole lot. It hurts to look at. It, it does. does. It hurts your soul. It hurts your heart. And when you you're coming in to to hear the word of God and and read the Bible and and do the Christian things, not necessarily like they they. They mentioned that they were building this playground for children once, one sermon, one time. But it's like, you know, it's literally, it, it gives me a lump in my, in my heart <laughs> like to like, when I come in. And I remember like last Sunday, like it really affected my perception of even the, the sermon because the only thing I could think about was like, what's going on? Like, why? And it really. You mean me being heart. out here? Yeah, yeah. It really pulled at my heart, and, and it should, I'm I glad. <laughs> I'm and glad. Sure. It should. It should make us sick, right? What's happening? It's just. I'm coming out here to talk to you guys, as 
as a father of, from a two-year-old son, yeah. like, I, I don't want him being exposed to these things right now. I would like, as a parent, to be able to talk to him about it whenever it's, it's my, you know, whenever I have the ability to talk to him about it. And it's, I'm sure it'll come up on its own. And if not, I will talk about it. <laughs> well, um, hopefully someday he'll, he'll 